We got breaking news. Wizards guard Bradley Beal, his season is over. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Ref the District. I'm Nathan Perry. Joining me as always, it's my co-host, Trevor. And joining us today for this video, it's the real Ed Oliver. Thanks, Ed, for joining us here on Ref the District. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and where our fans can catch you? Um, yeah, I'm currently a co-host on Locked on Wizards, and uh, I do watch the football content on YouTube. Um, so you guys can follow me on there and subscribe. We do uh, Locked on Wizards on YouTube, and it's on all platforms on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you guys can get a podcast. So uh, I know you guys love the football team, love DC sports. So, uh, yeah, you guys can find me on YouTube as well. Awesome. So catch him out again. He mentioned Ed Oliver on YouTube and the Locked on Wiz uh, podcast as well. That's who we're going to be talking about today are the Washington Wizards. Big news dropped. Bradley Beal is going to be out for the rest of the season. This is dropping on the same day that the Washington Wizards missed out on a couple of big names mm -hmm. in the trade right before the trade deadline hits. Ed, what do you think that this means for the Wiz, you know, as the trade trade deadline approaches? Um, so I, I really think they should move on and turn the page to say it nicely. Um, rebuild if they if they could, but we know that Ted Leonsis and Tommy Shepard are not gonna do that. They still wanna re they wanna build around Bradley Bill. Um so him being out for the season, uh, it looks like you know we're we're out of the playing game right now. It looks like we're gonna trend towards um, losing some more games, in my opinion. I think we might end up being in the in the lottery, which might be the best option for the team to get to get a good draft pick. Um, there's a lot of good guys in the draft. Um, but Bradley Bill being out for the season, and I think it's a good opportunity to see other guys play. This this will give Denny Avdia a chance to play more. This will give Rui a chance to play more with Bradley Bill not being available. So um, but I really hope they do trade a couple guys. Um, I hope they can get Spencer Dinwiddie. I think it would be better for both sides if Spencer Din if they could find a trade for Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, there's rumors that people don't like him on the team, that they don't get along, um, and that he's a shell of himself. Um, so he hasn't looked good at all this year, in, in my opinion. Um, and Montrezl Harrell, I love Trez. He plays with a lot of en energy, but he's an expiring contract. So if they can move him, um, I think that, that would be a good move for the team. Just, just to let the young guys play because – it looks like we're not really going anywhere with a lot of these veterans, to be honest. So, um, but missing out on Sabonis, Sabonis uh, that hurts. I mean, for for the Bradley Bill building around him, if you want to build around him, you got to get another star because he's 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 kind of shown us that he's not a number one option. He's more of like a number two. But you need more stars around him. You look at Zach Levine. You look at Devin Booker. Devin Booker got got Chris Paul, and that really helped him. You look at Zach Levine now. He has Demar Derozan now. He has. Vucevic now he has Lonzo Ball. If you were able to get Sabonis, he could be similar to that mm -hmm. Vucevic kind of piece, and then you could start grabbing guys from other teams like a point guard, uh, similar to Alonzo Ball or Alex Caruso or Demar Derozan, and try to build the Wizards like that. But with Sabonis going off the the board and going to a different team like the Kings, the trade market is really really dull right now. Uh, there's no big names. I guess Ben Simmons, but is, is Ben Simmons really going to help you? Not much at all. And you're probably going to have to trade Bradley Bill just to get Ben Simmons. Um, so it, it just doesn't help much. So the, the Wizards' outlook and all our first-round picks, we can't even trade a first-round pick until 2028, which is what – what is that, like an eighth grader at the moment or a ninth grader or something <laughs> yeah. like that? So, <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it just shows how the, the situation that the Wizards are really in. And they really – Need Tommy Shepard needs to look long and hard at the rebuilding phase, but we know that the Wizards are not going to do that. Um, so Bradley Bill being out, it's, it's unfortunate, but um, I think it's going to be good for Denny and, and Rui and let those guys just let the young guys play for the rest of the season mm -hmm. and Kispert too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Kispert would be one that I'm pretty excited about watching. Uh, he seems to uh, get better with the more minutes that he's been getting. Now, you mentioned that, that the trade market's not very exciting right now, but you did mention the Wizards have a few pieces that they could really give up to get something in return. You've also mentioned the lack of draft capital. Is that something mm. that the Wizards are looking maybe to get back, or are they going to look to get players in return for what they have? Yeah, I would I would look to get some draft picks. I would look if, – if you can get a draft pick for Montrezl Harrell, uh, I would look into that. Maybe Thomas Bryant. I don't think you'll get a first round pick for any of these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, they they wanted to showcase guys like Montrez and Thomas Bryant, but mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. These last couple of games, we've been losing by 30 points. We literally, we literally lost at home to the Miami Heat by 20 points, where they were saying, let's go Heat in our own court. Uh, the Celtics, they were cheering loud as I don't know what for Jason Tatum when he scored 50 points. Um, we lost to the Suns by 25 or 20 mm-hmm. points. So, I mean, GMs are looking at our team. And they're looking at the Wizards and like, you know, the Wizards are losing by 30. Who, who, why would we want any of these guys when the Wizards are losing by 30 points? So you look at the assets that the Wizards have and the Pacers said it themselves. You know, Woj, uh, Adrian Wojnarowski said, the Wizards don't have enough assets to acquire a Sabonis. So, you know, I mean, Denny's a he's a good player. Rui's a good player, but they're just not going to fetch. They're not going to get you much in a return. Thomas Bryant, I, if I'm a GM looking at Thomas Bryant coming off an ACL injury, I'm not I'm really going to trade. Him. Yeah, I'm not trading yeah. Thomas Bryant. Same, same thing with Spencer Dinwiddie. He's another guy that just came off an ACL injury. I'm not trading mm-hmm. much for Spencer Dinwiddie. So the Wizards are just stuck in, um, in basketball purgatory right now. It's really tough to make any moves. Um, and Bertans, I didn't even bring him up. Um, to trade Bertans, you it's probably, a reason why. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> to trade Bertans, you probably have to attach a pick to trade Bertans. Yeah. <laughs> you probably have to say, hey, we're going to give you something just to get Bertans' contract off of our book. So, yeah, the assets are not – the best trade asset is probably Kyle, probably Kyle Kuzma. And I really – I would hate to trade Kuzma because he's, he's actually playing hard. Like, we're – looking at this team play, it's hard to see guys play hard. Like, guys aren't even – guys don't want to be here. And you can tell in the body language. There was a coach fighting a fan last night. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah. Um, yep. KCP and Trez got in a fight. Denny and Davies got in a fight. Um, the locker room is toxic. Montrez just said the, the mood effing sucks in the press yes. conference. Yes. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's just bad right now, man. Um, the 10 and 3 start, man, it really fooled me. I really thought this team was what the 10 and 3 start was. I was just being an optimistic Wizard fan and I wanted to believe it for once. Um, but I, I was humbled. I, I think all of us were. Um, I know a lot of people didn't weren't fooled by the 10 and 3 start. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, as far as the answer to the assets, yeah, it's going to be hard to see what they trade. Um, I think the best asset is probably Trez, to be honest. And I hate to see Trez go because he's one of the few guys that play hard as well. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned, I mean, we mentioned about, you said that um, Tommy Shepard and Ted Leonis want to build around Bradley Beal, but we mm-hmm. all think agree that's time to move on. Mm-hmm. Um, if they were to build around Bradley Beal, what kind of, like you said, you mentioned a center like a Vucevic to, to bring there, but don't you think since they've already brought John Wall in, didn't work, right, they brought right. Russell Westbrook in, didn't work. Do you think that they should actually maybe take a look at Bradley Beal's chemistry with all these other players? Mm-hmm. I mean, they just brought Dinwiddie in, Kuzma and Harrell. You know, 10-3 and three start was great, but they were still always saying, we still got to learn how to play together, chemistry. And it seems like they're never going to find that this year, especially with him being injured. So if you were in, in control, would you honestly build around Bradley Beal one more time or would you move him and do a complete re- rebuild? And if that was the case, who would you rebuild around if it wasn't Bradley Beal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would definitely move on. Um, if I can get some picks, I really like the, – there was an offer. Of course, we we missed the opportunity. Uh, the Warriors, in the summertime, they really, really wanted Bradley Bill. That was the report coming out. They were willing to give us uh, some of their young guys, like Jonathan Kaminga, Jordan Poole, James Wiseman, some picks. Um, that was the rumor. Um, so I definitely would have taken that. Um, moves right now that you could probably trade Bradley Bill for, I would call it the Celtics. Because him and Jason Tatum are very, very close. I would see if, if you know if they want to trade Jalen Brown. That's a lateral move. Jalen Brown's not going to really make us a championship contender or anything like that. But it would right. start a, a different page, just turning the page, just mixing up. Because I think the Wizards, they just need to do something different. Mm-hmm. And if Jalen Brown doesn't work out, he's a younger guy. He's on a cheaper. He's still on a max deal, but it's cheaper than what Bradley Bill is potentially going to get. He's going to get five years, two hundred forty-two million dollars, which is a very good amount of money for uh, for for anybody in the NBA. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would look at Jalen Brown, um, building around him. If I had to build Sabonis would have been, would have been the start. That would have been the mm-hmm. perfect start just because he's young. He's 25. He's, he's getting $19 million per year. You, you know, he's not, he's not, he, his, his contract is, is $3 million more than what Bertans is getting. So he would have been a really, really good affordable deal. Um, he's an all-star. He's not, he's not a world, he's not, he's nowhere near like a Jokic or anything like that. But he, Sabonis is a darn good player. He would have, yeah. that would have definitely helped. Um, uh, but in, in the off season right now, it, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to tell what they're going to do. Cause it looks like they really, really, really want to build around Brad. Um, there's a point guard 
out there. Um, Jalen Brunson from the Mavericks, he's going to be a free agent. I think they should go hard after him. After him. Um, and I, I think they should try to – they really should try to lose as many games as possible and just get the best draft to pick available. <laughs> um, there's, like, three players on Duke that I, I really, really like. There's mm-hmm. a guy from Purdue named Jaden Ivey as well that they could draft, a point guard. Um, so there's, there's some really good players in the draft. But, um, yeah, I, I would definitely retool, see if I can get as many picks uh, as, I, as I can for Bradley Bill and, and a couple good young players. Um, I know p- people don't want to trade for Ben Simmons, but – I think in the long run, if they if they did make that move to just restart, just to mix it mm-hmm. up and restart, um, you don't have to keep Ben Simmons forever. Just like Russell Westbrook, we traded John Wall for Russell Westbrook. We built up Russ's value. He looked really mm-hmm. good. And we flipped him for three or four players like Kuz, Trez, and KCP. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So Ben Simmons, you let him play for a year, build up his value. If it doesn't work out, Ben Simmons is still talented. Um, you probably get a couple first first round picks for Ben Simmons. So that's the thing. If if you did want to restart, Bradley Bill's value, you got to think about it too. His value is going down because he hasn't played well. He he didn't even make the All Star this year, All Star game this year. He didn't even make, mm-hmm. and he wasn't even really close in my opinion. He wasn't there's, an alternate. Yeah, he wasn't even no. an alternate. So there's no. other guys that were ahead of him. You know, Darius Garland, other guys. Mm-hmm. So um, you got to look at, at from other teams too. You know, I'm not going to trade for Bradley Bill who. Shot 20, 20 something percent from the three, led led the team in turnovers. Um, so it, it was a rough year for Brad. And, and now that, coming off of a wrist right, injury. Of a wrist injury, too. <laughs> and that thir- that 34 point loss looked really bad. And and not only did it look bad on the team, but it looked bad on Brad too. Because he's the number one guy on the team. He's supposed to be the leader. And other other teams see that. They see that. They see the dysfunction. And yes, they had John Wall. Yes, they had Russell Westbrook, and now they have Dinwiddie, and it hasn't worked out with with three guys. So yeah, the one common denominator there has been Bradley Bill. They got to look at him too. He, he's a great guy off the court. I, there's nothing bad to say about him off the court, but just as a as a number one guy, he's just not a number one guy. Well, there is a strong desire to build around him here in Washington. Mm-hmm. That's right. coming from the front office, but what about? brad's decision in this what mm-hmm. if he doesn't want to stay if do you think he walks away from the wizards when his contract is up this is a it's a, it's a tough one um if this happens if, if he leaves for nothing then the wizards front office man they need to be really evaluated because you cannot let bradley bill walk for nothing um mm-hmm. because that, that would just look awful in the organization um and it doesn't really help much with cat space let, just letting him leave and let him walk um, because you could have traded him last year. You could have traded him the year before and got a lot of assets. Um, but looking at him from his perspective, too, do you really want to come back to the Wizards um, who they don't look like they're going to compete for a champion? They're not going to be the Nets. They're not going to be the Bucks, the Heat. Um, you can name four or five. The Sixers, you can name four or five or 16. Cavs. Seven, Cavs now. Really, yeah, seven, eight, nine. Right? The Raptors are better, look better mm-hmm. than the Bulls. I didn't even say the Bulls. Um, and the, yeah. East is, the East is better. So looking from Bradley Bill's perspective, the only thing that is going to make him come back is that contract. If he mm-hmm. is, you know, focused on the money more than winning, and nowadays in the NBA, guys can sign big deals because people nowadays they say, you know, oh, we can never. This contract is untradeable. But John mm-hmm. Wall had a he had a super max deal. He got traded. Russell Westbrook had a super max deal. He got traded. Chris Paul got traded. Just because these guys have big deals doesn't mean they can't get traded. So what Bradley Bill might most likely will do. He'll probably he probably sign that five year two hundred forty two million dollar deal, and then if it doesn't work out, like Anthony Davis, he forced his way out. He sat down with the Pelicans mm-hmm. until he could play with LeBron. He might do something similar to James Harden, same thing. He didn't want to mm-hmm. play with Houston. Now he looks like James Harden is doing the same thing with the Nets. Now I don't know what's going on with that situation, but um, Bradley Bill could could unfortunately he could probably do the same thing. Just sign that deal, play one year with the Wizards. If it doesn't work out then, you know, he can sit out and, and hold out if he doesn't want to be there and then force us to trade him away. I know this is supposed to be Bradley Bill-centric, but we're talking about Wizards anyway. Mm-hmm. Do you think Wes Unseld was a mistake of a hire? Because not only with the, the, the loss, the games that they've lost mm-hmm. and the point deficit, but it sounds like he can't control the locker room very mm-hmm. well. Do you think that how, – how much time do you think he has left as a Wizards head coach, honestly? Yeah, that's a good question, too. And I, yeah, that's a good question. I, I like West a lot. I mean, of course, the whole story is dad, you know, winning the only the only championship for the Washington Bullets slash Wizards, you know, back in 1978, you know. Um, right. So, of course, it's a great story. And, you know, West was with the Wizards back in 
the Gilbert Arenas days. He was an assistant coach under Eddie Jordan. It worked his way up. It's a great story. I understand it. And I, I think Wes is a great guy, a nice guy too. But, you know, sometimes you got to have that personality. There's a lot of strong egos in there. Trez is such a strong personality. KCP has an ego. He won a championship. Kuzma has an ego. He won a mm-hmm. championship with the Lakers. Uh, Dinwiddie uh, averaged 20 points a game in, in, a, in a season before. So he has an ego. He wants to get his buckets. Bradley Bill, of course, has an ego. He wants to get his buckets, you know. So you're dealing with a lot of guys. Denny's got to get minutes. Then Rui came back. Thomas Bryant came back. Um, there's a lot of guys in there. There's too, too many guys in there playing at one time. Mm-hmm. There's like 12 guys playing uh, in, in the rotation. That's way too many guys. And they needed to consolidate that roster and trades. Like, like I already said, you had two fights uh, on the court and one in the locker room. Um, so, yeah, I am the, the the voice and the control leader of men. You know, one thing, and of course, we're all watching the fans. One thing I, I don't question about Ron Rivera, I don't agree with his decision making. I don't agree with a lot of his fourth down and third down decision making, mm-hmm. uh, his personnel moves. Um, mm-hmm. But one thing I do agree with is that Ron Rivera is a leader of men. That's one mm-hmm. thing I cannot question about Ron Rivera. And that is a question about Wes Unsell Jr. He is a rookie co- head coach. Does he have that voice where he can control the locker room? There was a text. That it was his beat reporter guy that the prisoners were running the asylum. That's the last yeah. thing. That's the last thing you want to hear is that prisoners mm-hmm. are running the asylum. Mm-hmm. And it, that's what yeah. it looks like. That's what it looks like. It right really now. does. Um, yeah, there's zero chemistry. Um, this is zero chemistry. You can look on the offensive side, the defensive side, there's zero chemistry right now. I was gonna say, because he was brought there to be defensive minded, you know, right, right, and yeah. we're getting blown out by 25 or more. That's right. that's not defense. So mm-hmm. and I, I yep. did like I did really like Sam Cassell. Um, yeah, and I like Sam. It, it, it makes sense because if you want to build around Bradley Bill, Brad because Sam Cassell coached the Wizards when John Wall was here 2014, 2015. And, and Brad really loved Sam Cassell. Sam Cassell loved Brad and John. If you really want to build around Bradley Bill, I think you would want to listen to who he wanted to to bring in as a coach. Mm-hmm. So if the Wizards were really on the same page with building around this guy, Bradley Bill, why not let him choose who the coach is? You know, I think Give that was Aaron Rodgers treatment. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it, it kind of doesn't make sense that they're trying to build around him and they're kind of like they listen to him with some moves and then some moves they don't listen to him. So it's kind of like if they're going to give him the LeBron treatment, then you mm-hmm. might as well let him choose the coach too. And I kind of, I, I, the jury is still out on Wes. I'll give Wes. I think Wes would do better with younger guys rather than guys like Trez and Dinwiddie guys who have, you know, have said stuff. Dinwiddie also in the press conference said he tried to lead and the guys didn't take him well. Yeah. Um, so they didn't want to hear what did what he had to say. So I mean, every press conference it's, is like it's hard to hard to listen to the guy who's who's <laughs> not exactly playing well. I don't, right, I don't want right. to, it's not the guy yeah, you want so to listen to. Who do you listen to on this team? Then if right. I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's accurate. Now the coach, you know, Wes did mention that that uh, part that you talked about, Ed. Right, the rotation. It's hard because mm-hmm. they already had a full roster essentially, and then they get guys back from last year and Rui. Uh, and and Bryant who are deserving of minutes, so it's it's been difficult for him to find that rotation. Do you think that if the Wizards are able to trade away some of these, um, you know, and you know, pare down this roster, and maybe B- Brad doesn't stay, and and he does get this younger roster, that that would be helpful for Wes Unsell Jr. I think it would because it would be younger guys that are going to listen to him, um, guys who are not really going to tune him out. Um, KCP said they, they lack communication. They lack a defensive anchor as well in the press conference, and he said that guys are not listening to uh, coaching, which which is just telling. Uh, I think he would – yeah, I think he would – him being a rookie head coach, you kind of want to see him grow with young guys. I kind of mm-hmm. – uh, uh, this is my last football comparison or reference, but you usually see – a young coach come in with a rookie quarterback. Sometimes mm-hmm. you, you kind of want to start um, a first year, the coach that comes to your team, you kind of want to bring him in with a rookie. That's kind of the ideal situation. You don't want to see Ron Rivera having to see uh, Dwayne Haskins. And they just came in at two different years. You know, you kind of yeah. want to see the quarterback and the, and the team and the coach come in at the same time. It doesn't always happen like that. But for a rookie head coach, you kind of want to, you kind of want to see that happen. And this, this time you had a rookie head coach, 
come into a situation with a lot of guys who have been there for a lot of vets, a lot of yeah, a lot of vets. have that championship experience. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So to, to bring it back into the basketball world and maybe yeah. make a little bit of an ouch for Wizards fans. Right. But Scott Brooks had that opportunity, made an entire career out of it by coming right. in with uh, with the Thunder. When yeah, they were all a bunch young. of young yeah. talent. So right. mm-hmm. uh, absolutely wouldn't mm-hmm. work out uh, for Wes. We'll see where the season goes. It should mm-hmm. be very interesting. Again, the Wizards struck out with the big names mm. as far as the trade deadlines concerned and Bradley Beal's injury, season uh, season ending injury means that the season could be lost, but they have been somewhat successful with him out of the lineup, yeah. or at least up until recently. We did mention yeah. a couple of those yeah. bad losses here recently. We'll see where the season goes. Ed, thanks for joining us. Again, you can catch him on his own channel, Ed Oliver, here on YouTube. You can also catch him on the Wiz, Locked on Wiz uh, Sports channel as well. Thanks again for joining us here on Ref the District. And until next time, Be a fan.